Cruise ship employees out there, what are some things that we may not know about your job? What happens below decks? I am an engineer on merchant ships, haven't worked a cruise ship, but I know plenty of guys that have. They pack the waitresses in there four to a room, so they will sleep with an engineer just to get some alone time, we get our own room. Do the it guys get their own room? Ships have IT guys right? I'm asking for a friend. Yes. There's a great book from an IT guy on a ship. He spent his time writing a book. Well, that answers that question. A relative worked on a carnival cruise ship for a bit. He said that the number one rule was that staff were not allowed to have sex with passengers. He also said that one of the perks of working for Carnival was the ability to vacation on an island Carnival owns and apparently reserves, mostly if not exclusively, for its employees. Edit. Based on the rest of this thread, apparently the number two rule is ignore the previous rule. I want to see this island. Does it have carnival cruise-like amenities or is it just your standard hotel and grocery store on a remote island kind of island? I had a solid gig playing on a cruise line for a couple summers as a jazz musician. I played with a house quartet every night for three months. Here are some things you may not know about the job. 1. Almost every employee smoked weed. When we weren't performing or sleeping, we were talking like there was no tomorrow, it was a great way to pass the time. 2. Disease spreads incredibly fast. There were a couple episodes of a stomach flu taking over the ship. It was so bad I thought we were going to have to get the CDC to disinfect the ship. Overall it was a really fun job for the summer. Pay wasn't spectacular, but I got to go to awesome places, meet new people, and play nightly gigs. I was a backstage technician from 2007 to 2009 for Carnival Cruise Lines, and as my first post on Reddit ever, I'll try to answer unasked questions as best I can. I loved the job, I loved the people, but I hated the corporation. The company always made it difficult for those of us in entertainment to do our jobs and help the guests enjoy their cruise. That said, I agree with what some of the other people are saying about their time on board. It wasn't so much like summer camp for me, it was more like a dorm at college. I got up whenever, it was a red letter day if I was awake in time for lunch, did some very basic work setting up a game show or turning on a microphone for the shopping specialist, and played a lot of video games until the evening's show. I set up the evening's show, helping to load pyro, checking double checking all the machinery, etc., ran the show, and then struck tied down all the set pieces. If there was no midnight comedy show, I went to the crew bar. Crew bar is pretty much the only thing to do in the evenings, and since my go-to drink, Grey Goose and Ginger Ale, was less than $2, back then I think it was $1.75, it was hard to argue anything else. Occasionally, we'd set up morale parties, but those tended to be hit or miss. I mostly spent my evenings hitting on whoever would let me, whether it be waitresses, dancers, bartenders, dancers, and yeah, the dancers. Never managed to close the deal with the dancers, awkwardly enough. Looking back, the food was awful. Generally, the chefs who work topside get trained in the galley down below. They were pretty random on what was good or bad, honestly. Mostly, it got monotonous, since the menu didn't seem to change up very often. I was considered staff, halfway between officers and crew, so I was able to get food to order, such as eggs or a chicken breast, hamburger, etc., and we came up with college-style recipes and ways to combine foods to make them new. Most didn't work. Crew staff were definitely not allowed to fraternize with the guests, but it certainly didn't stop many people. I can't say that I did personally, although there was a fetching lady that kept asking me back to her room, but once I found out how outrageously fake her ID was, but I had a roommate that was the DJ at the discotheque, and it was a few times a week that he wouldn't come back at his normal 4am, stumbling drunk, slurring at the top of his voice bedtime. As far as port calls, I've made some great memories there. Since I worked in the main theater, there wasn't much for us to do during port calls, and unless there was important maintenance, like moving the 1,000-pound new soundboard up eight decks, I was generally making a mess of things in some port call or other. My favorite by far is Cozumel, followed closely by New York City, all of the islands down near Puerto Rico, and the Mexican Riviera on the Pacific side of the country. 
Again, I spent most of my time trying to hit on various women and drinking, but I also spent time with some of my best friends and saw some great stuff in Port Calls. I learned to scuba dive in Cozumel, went swimming with wildish stingrays on Grand Cayman, and saw some amazing Mayan ruins on mainland Mexico near Cozumel. Some of the darker stuff let's see for starters, I hear that nearly all the live music is gone from carnival ships due to it not bringing in any money directly. It's kind of heartbreaking, I knew a lot of excellent musicians that likely were laid off, only to be replaced by canned music and karaoke. I don't have anything against Karayak, of course, but they also, last I heard, got rid of the Karayak host and the aft lounge technician, and just lumped those jobs onto the main lounge technician and social hosts. As far as the officers, it was exceptionally rare that they were anything but Italian, and while there were exceptions to the rule, the majority of them were raging ass hats. There was your basic managerial nightmare boss stuff, but there was other stuff, like security turning a blind eye to some of what they did. I heard horror stories about crew members being beaten, threatened, stalked, etc. I didn't see most of this firsthand, but a ship is a very small place, and word gets around. Most of the higher officers had wives kids at home, and nearly all of them had mistresses on board. There was a time on one of my ships that the mistress was pretty pissed because the wife and kid came aboard for a visit, lasting maybe a month or two the crew was especially wary during that time since shit has a habit of rolling downhill, and it did then, too. Looking back, it really was an amazing time in my life and I'm so glad I happened upon that job, even if there was some darkness in there. I'm just touching on my experiences since I could go on much farther, provided I could remember. To end on a high note, I should mention that my amateur-ish flirting did occasionally end well for me. I dated a few crew members and managed to convince a few more to take their clothes off with me in the room. Eventually, I met an amazing blonde woman that worked in the video production department, the people running around with the big video cameras. We met, and after two weeks with her, I was sent to a new ship. It was supposed to be my last contract. But after corresponding with her for a few months, I changed that plan and did one last contract so I could spend more time with her. To make a very long and happy story short, our two-year wedding anniversary is coming up fairly soon. After we met, I joined the Coast Guard, where I am today. I hope that suffices for interesting, I tend to think most of what happens to me is interesting, and I'm often proved incorrect. Edit. Wow, gold on my first post. Thanks a ton. Perhaps my lurking days are over. X cruise ship employee here, we get absolutely shitfaced below deck. Everyone fucks each other all over the ship. My girlfriend at the time and I had a competition with an officer and his lady for the riskiest place to have sex. I thought we had won with the bow of the ship in the middle of the night. Nope, him being an officer stopped the elevator midway, his lady and him jumped on top of the elevator while it was stopped and proceeded to ride the elevator and get it on as guests were getting on and off the elevator beneath them. Okay this blew up to clear a few doubts and answer a couple of questions. The officer was not alone in his efforts, from what I know he had a friend of his on the bridge stopping the elevator for him so they could get in position if you will. I assume he was also making sure the elevator did not crush them as well. He could have been lying, but for the story's sake I like to think that's how it went down. Secondly, I was a dancer in the cast on board and had a lot more free time than most being all I did was perform in the shows. I do suggest working on ships for anyone who is curious, it's a great way to see the world, make lifelong friends, and get laid I know many couples who met on a ship and are married with kids now, etc it really sets the stage for a nice fling, or love, depending on where you're coming from and what you're ready for. The crew bar was absolutely a place of drunken adventures, cheap booze, and smoke, everyone smoked. Crew members were from all over the world, and each night was themed to a different cultures, music etc. I loved it, being an 18 years old from Texas, I learned more from the international crew than I ever could have imagined, and I'm very thankful for the experience. All in all, I highly recommend it, at least for one contract. If you don't like it, chalk it up as free travel, free accommodations, and a job. Below decks is where the below jobs happen. Control plus F below jobs I knew I'd find it. Like cockwork. Don't listen to them, below jobs are for sockers. 
I've heard from a friend who is a policeman that there are morgues on cruise ships, mostly for old people who died regularly in their slumber. More people are choosing to retire on cruise ships as it's cheaper than a home, and there is always a doctor on board. That's actually a really cool idea. Like, comment, and share. Reddit Story Topper. Subscribe now.